Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gamer here, and we are back with another video. And today I'm very excited to talk about Dr. Ratio, a free character who's coming to our account. So we definitely want to take advantage of this free gift that we have been gotten because we'll be able to tackle imaginary element a lot better as well. Regardless of whether you have done Heng in Bible Lune or not, this video is probably going to be meant for you. I'm going to be sharing with you some useful uh, team compositions for Dr. Ratio that you can take away and maybe if you realise now with the changing meta in the memory of chaos, together with the pure fiction, these teams and variations will help you make Dr. Ratio relevant across the time periods as well. So let's not waste any time, you know this channel is very straight to the point. Let's talk first about general concepts. What is Dr. Ratio? What does he do? What is his specialties? He is a follow-up attacker that relies a little bit on debuffs on the enemies or to a large extent, he needs the enemies to have debuffs to gain like buffs himself to make himself stronger. His whole kit revolves around like using a little bit of skill points or quite a bit of skill points as well. So he does like to use skill actively and he has a lot of follow-up in his kit. So taking that aside and knowing that he's a DPS nature hunt, very single target in nature, we can start to form logical thoughts of which characters work very well and these characters will eventually fall into place into the team compositions that Dr. Ratio wants to perform in. Let's talk about general stuff that's very good. The easiest part of course is talk about buffers, right? The easiest one to talk about maybe is like Yukong because she's an imaginary damage buffer, same type buffer. Pretty straightforward, you can put planetary rendezvous on her. She has imaginary buffing in her kit. Uh, she's able to buff a lot of crit rate, crit damage that Dr. Ratio does like as well. The only problem with Ikong, uh, in currently in like version 1.6 is we do not have a skill point buffer that is like feeding a lot of skill points unless you maybe run like Hanya, you run run me in the same team, but it's very, very uh, hyper carry-ish kind of style. If we had a support that, for example, feeds in skill points would be really, really nice uh, for two hungry skill point characters in general. So that is the first buffer that I think is going to be very nice. The second one, as we mentioned briefly, is Hanya. Hanya does offer a bit more skill points uh, to, for example, the character that wants to drain all these skill points and she does a lot of buffing as well, which is why I think she might work pretty well with uh, Dr. Ratio. Uh, that is the second buffer I think that comes to mind. Next up, of course, is Ting Yun. Ting Yun is going to be very, very useful still in version 1.6 for him is because Dr. Ratio has quite a high burst cost requirement. Giving your DPS here energy, giving your DPS a bit of uh, attack percentage, damage bonuses and whatnot is very, very good for him. So Ting Yun is another character that is, again, Ting is super popular for DPSers because she just offers so much for a hyper carry-ish kind of style. Of course, I'm not saying you can only play him hyper carry. We'll talk about more team comps in a bit. And last but not least, of course, uh, Ron May is like a broken record right now. Ron May can be played almost anywhere. She can be fit to any team. If any of you pulled her in the first half, you'll be happy to know that you can form teams very nicely with Dr. Ratio with her already. Um, she does a lot of damage buffing, a lot of rest ignore. Um, Team-wide support, which means that you can run a double DPS, maybe like a whole pass together with uh, Dr. Ratio. And that is something that is worth considering, which is this special category here. So Topaz, why am I putting her here is because he does a lot of follow-up attacks. Although they are both hunt, if we think about it, it's like very question mark, question mark. Why are you playing both hunt characters in the same team? Both of them do a lot of damage uh, and they are very, very, they are relatively supportive of each other because he does a lot of follow-up, helping her move very often. And at the same time, if you're acting outside of your, your odd turn order, which means you actually do a lot more damage than otherwise is uh, normal characters that just only hit once in their turn order and stuff like that. So I think Topaz and Ambi and him could see a very nice team, especially if you have uh, ability to buff both of them. For example, like even Esther, maybe to some extent, a buffer that buffs two DPSs could see quite good value as well. Next up, of course, we have Ho Ho here, who is great for energy restoration, team-wide buffing. She supports teams with double DPSs because of her ability to buff more than one character and feeding energy to the rest of the team. Again, same thing of why Ting is very good. Ho Ho is also really excellent for Dr. Ratio too. So that aside, now let's talk about debuffers because he wants to feed off enemies with debuffs. So let me talk about three characters that I think are pretty good for him. The first one, of course, is kind of basic, which is going to be Pella. All of us will probably have access to one Pella gotten for a reward, but if you're a new joiner, not to worry. She's a four-star character. You can e we'll eventually get her sooner or later. So debuffs, a Pella, you can put her on with like, the resolu resolution. Sly shines as pearls of sweat. Always trips me up with that word. But uh, that light cone enables to uh, proc additional defense shred, which is a separate icon 
compared to Pella's own defense chair and I rest down, which means you can hit easily three debuffs with Pella already and maybe more if I'm counting it right uh, for him to have his full debuff effects. Uh, stacked up on so Pella very very nice addition defense break on the AOE enemies is also very strong but the better debuffer in my opinion would probably be a character like Silver Wolf Silver Wolf is going to be able to implant tons of debuffs on a single target which is generally what Dr. Ratio is going to be hitting anyway she's able to drop in imaginary weakness on the enemy if she's played on Dr. Ratio on the same team occasionally so I think that um, Silver Wolf is also an, an excellent excellent option she drops in way more debuffs than Pella um, which is interesting note the last one that I put here is actually Welt. Welt is an a interesting debuffer. He's imaginary debuff in a sense. He slows the enemy. If you, for example, play Ronme and you break the enemy with imaginary weakness break, breaking, uh, they could be out for a really, really long time because of the slow together that two-turn imaginary weakness break that Ronme provides. Uh, it can be interesting. I'm very interested to see in Welt Ronme team comes together Dr. Ratio. But um, of course, we'll be testing more once it goes live. You can check us out on Twitch or we'll also be doing videos here on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed to get notifications of these videos if you care about Dr. Ratio too. The last thing I want to talk about is not a mention. Uh, so I'll just like leave it here and then I'll bring it down in a little bit. DOT teams, and I'm using Kafka as a representative, DOT teams also stack up debuffs very, very quickly because um, DOTs, if for those of you who don't know, like that shock, that burn, that wind shear, all counts have Z debuffs. So these stack up very, very quickly. If you are looking to build a bit more special teams with Kafka DOT characters inside, I would say they actually offer quite a lot of debuff potential too, especially if you have certain light cones that is able to proc uh, DOT debuffs. For example, like the universe, trend of universal market, the preservation light cone that you can like stack on top of them to burn the enemies might also be an option if you're looking to for more debuffs in your roster. But anyways, now let's jump into the team compositions, shall we? Now that we have like, gotten the basics of it. So first up, the FUA, the follow-up attacking team composition. This definitely looks at Topaz as one of the most preferred teammates in the roster. You have uh, Dr. Ratio himself, you have Topaz here, who as mentioned previously, they really work very well together because he does quite a bit of follow-up attacking. She does like a lot of her teammates to be able to keep launching follow-up attacks. Uh, and the pivot here, what we are looking for is really characters that offer that follow-up attack potential or at least some sort of like supportive capabilities. And there are so many over here. So Clara, I think, is an interesting one because she does follow-up attacks on the enemy. She is relatively a defensive DPS in general. She draws aggro. She has damage reduction, um, which plays nicely into like a kind of like a triple DPS team. If you're running like this up the top here, this Topaz and Numbi, Clara as well as Dr. Ratio, you could consider putting utility as ho ho because you buff triple characters. Uh, you provide a lot of heal, energy restoration, whatnot to your whole team as well, which is interesting to, to note. But of course, not everyone has so many, so much money, right? Um, other options that we can consider is, for example, Hanya to give more skill points so that we can keep the uptime on their outs uh, and their skill points so they can just keep like using skills and stuff. Hanya is a good choice. Yukong is a situational choice. Maybe it's because she buffs a lot of... Uh, she does buff like team-wide, but it, again, a very, very large amount of skill point consumption if you don't run Yukong with them. But it's just I'm just leaving it as an option available for any of you who are a bit more adventurous too. Uh, the character that I do like in the roster with more than one DPS always is Ranmei. If you, if you put her in the first half, she's very useful because you can have a character that uses the skill points. She funnels back uh, she's generally skill point positive and she adds a lot of damage to a double DPS roster which is an excellent uh, unit as well especially if you're looking at Hanya uh, Ronmei is also another option available to you if you put her in the first half well again as mentioned very strong uh, team white slow on the enemies debuff on the enemies of, unfortunately doesn't offer too much uh, follow up attacks unlike like Clara and stuff but still usable I think if you just want to stack up the debuffs on the enemies make them move slower because unlike Clara who relies on enemies hitting you he, Dr. Ratio and Topaz, generally want you have the control because how much you attack the enemies is depending how much follow-ups you do, which is the nicer part and you are able to run with slow, 
slowing teammates. Whereas like Well and Clara doesn't really synergize very well because you want your enemies hitting you. That's why I put them like in the same slot here and that's why you hardly see Well and Clara teams in general because you want the enemies to hit you more. These two don't really care. Uh, Dr. Ratio and Topaz, so they work fine with Well, which is an option available. Last but not least, of course, is a cheaper alternative of a team-wide support. That is Esther. Esther offers fire damage bonus for Topaz. She offers attack percentage. She offers speed for the 200 DPSs, Dr. Ratio and Topaz to help you move faster as well. So I think this is interesting. She also offers burn in a basic attack. If that's worth anything, you stack on like one more diva for Dr. Ratio. So a very free, cheap alternative. Uh, might not be the best, but still nothing far from the worst either. Uh, last slot utility here, you can run Ho Ho, I think it's probably going to be the best. There are many other options depending on what you run on your second slot here, um, but you know, pretty much slap on any preservation unit, is you will definitely be able to add some um, debuffs on the enemy. March 7, for example, has fallout attacks, which works very nicely. Fire MC has a taunt, which is also a debuff, which is, works very nicely to get a doctor ratio. Uh, if you pair with Esther, you also get some fire damage bonus. The, all the preservation characters have access to Trend of Universal Market, which offers a burn on the enemy DOT, which is another source of damage over time. So that is just something to consider as well. But again, any of the sustained characters definitely work here well too. Out of all of them, I do prefer maybe a little bit more on Ho Ho out of all of them in this uh, Fua uh, team composition. Now, I am going to be making another slide here. Let's talk about Hyper Carry. I want to talk about a hyper carry team because I realize that probably some free to plays don't have many units and you want to start playing a hyper carry uh, roster here. The synergies, the utilities are going to look slightly different. Let me just move it aside. This is especially so for people who maybe don't have uh, Imbibitor Lune and you are just starting out a game, you're looking for a fresh start you want a very solid DPS. In this case, I think the pivot here is going to change a little bit. You're going to have the typical kind of hyper carry DPS like, that looks something like this, where you have uh, Ranmei, you have uh, Bronya here, who offers a lot of buffing. Ranmei is a bit more like two uh, units or more is she is when she really shines out of all the others. But one DPS, she's still okay. She's not too bad because she still provides some sort of skill points. So you could run, uh, for example, a Tingyun, double hyper carry, a double harmony hyper carry kind of style, or Hanya here, together with like Ranme, Bronya, Yukong here in this next slot, um, or, or she flipped around. So, okay, let's let's talk about it in terms of skill points here. That'll be much more clearer. So you could put a skill point positive harmony buffer here with a skill point negative uh, harmony buffer here to have like a double harmony hyper carry team. So this is like one option. Your third slot, of course, you can run any uh, unit. Uh, let's just put like a Natasha here for sustain because the options vary so much depending whether you have Ho Ho, depending on Luo Ta, you have Fu Shen and etc. Uh, but of course, hyper carry kind of style if you're looking for a bit more damage. I do think Ho Ho offers the most offensive potential. So I'll just leave these two here. But um, Natasha is just like a placeholder. So this is one option that you can go for. Yukong at lower Eidolons, I don't really like too much, just require quite a lot of things. But if you have her at higher Eidolons, she likely is going to be very, very strong. A lot of the very fast, like zero turn clears come with Yukong inside. If you haven't realized, um, a lot of the whales use her at E6, does massive amounts of damage buffing but at, a, at the expense of skill points. So if you do not want to run this road, let's say you want to run just one uh, Harmony because you don't have that much. You have two teams you have to build after all. Um, the next options that you have is to run a pivot here with a character like Pella, uh, with a character like Welt, although not really directly buffing him, still offers him some sort of debuffs, or a character, for example, like Silver Wolf. I think these three work very nicely in the pivot slot for a hyper-carry doctor ratio team, where you're able to implant a lot of weaknesses on enemy, defense shred them, uh, and uh, debuff them non-stop. So a team like this, I think is pretty stable going to a hyper-carry team. Very generic, very similar to most others, but more importantly is he is able to bring in characters that other characters might not use, like Welt. Um, he is another character that uses Pella decently well. Unlike, uh, for example, if you don't have Ting Liu, then your Pella is probably free. In that case, you can just consider putting him with Dr. Ratio. That is my hyper-carry team. Next up, of course, very similar to the hyper carry team, is going to be the mono imaginary team. Now, I want to just give a quick disclaimer for any of you who have Imbibitor Lune. Notice that he is outside of these three boxes here. 
is I don't think that Dr. Ratio and Imbibitor Lune might work insanely well with each other right now at 1.6. It's because we do not have simply the amount of skill points to funnel into both of them. He has a high, gen- uh, Dr. Ratio has a high energy burst cost and you do not want to have him use his basic attacks so you can funnel into to Imbibitor Lune. That is one of the biggest downsides and you will see as we talk about the other characters that we have in Mono Imaginary, we do need at least a uh, very strong a buffer that feeds skill points before we consider a mono imaginary team and that's a huge disclaimer because we might get that in 2.0 2.1 who knows right um, and then we can start thinking about teams for him but um, i will mention a bit uh, along the way too so synergy here i think that uh, out of all of them yukong probably is the best for imaginary teams buffing because of the amount of skill points uh, not skill skill points that she uses she uses a lot but she does a lot of buffing and damage potential for the whole team synergies i think that um Silver Wolf is really, really strong. I think she's super, super good because of the debuff. Uh, she can drop in imaginary weakness on the enemy, able to reduce their rest as well. Let's talk about a case where we do have a skill point buffer in future. Let me just put this uh, random box here and I'll label it SP. So this is like a skill point buffer if we have it in future. If that's the case, if you have a skill point buffer, you could run in this slot here. You can run Imbibitor Lune. So I'll just put it in the top part here. Then you can run your mono hyper carry team. If you have a skill point buffer in future that might be coming out, I'll put a placeholder here. You could consider running the top row here so that you can do more imaginary damage. You do want a little bit of uh, silver wolf or, or because you want to implant the weaknesses. But if the floor is already having imaginary weakness, I do see the first row being quite okay actually. Um, other than that, Welt is a very, very solid imaginary unit to put in a pivot slot. Doesn't consume or doesn't need to like massively consume a lot of skill points. He could if he wanted to. But um, very solid pivot because he offers a lot of AOE as well. Uh, it's a standard character to get. So if any of you have him on the bench, you could probably take him out, dust him out, and put him in uh, the field together with uh, Dr. Ratio, especially if you like Hass Bando teams, which we'll talk about in a bit. Last but not least, you have no choice. You have to play, unfortunately, Lota is the only imaginary character in the game right now um, for the imaginary class in a defensive slot. But we might get some in future. Who knows well, when we might do but uh, when that case, we can slot them in. But this is your options available for now. Of course, since you have uh, Silver Wolf here, I do think a cheaper alternative is to slap in, for example, the likes of uh, Lynx because double quantum, double imaginary, at least you have some sort of uh, coherence going around with dropping weaknesses. You don't get too many other random elements. Uh, Fushen is also another quantum character you can consider. That us. Those are like some of my thoughts for mono imaginary as well. So next up, Hasbando. I'm not going to bother with that blanking out. This is more of those people who are just playing for fun. You don't really care too much about meta. You want to slot in the best characters you can. I'm helping you build a team to help you create some, some sort of synergy between all of them. I don't think it's working fantastically because one thing is Hoiver still hasn't released and it's already like 1.6, 6, 7 months in. Haven't released a male Harmony character to finish our Hasbando team. Ridiculous. Um, but anyways, Synergy, I think he works very well with characters with a little bit of follow-up attack and half the Hasbandos other than Jing Yuan. Blade is the one that offers some of them. So I think that Blade is a, recent, a decent Synergy character who doesn't really consume too much skill points uh, that works very nicely. If you play Blade, you can easily play Luota here so you get some sort of a combo already. Together with a single target, you can slap in an AoE DPS like Argenti, like um, Jing Yuan. Imbibitor Lune to a lesser extent, that's why I put him like really, really small box here because you don't have a harmony buffer or a skill point buffer that is uh, Hasbando yet. Hopefully soon, Hoyovers. Hope you're listening to this. Um, but yeah, other than Blade, Synergy slots, well, also really strong. AoE, Imaginary, same element as well. Able to drop in a lot of debuffs on the enemies. Um, so I think he's pretty solid. Sampo is also, I guess, a Hasbando as well. But uh, he, DOT also counts as debuffs. He's a cheaper alternative for any of you who do not have like massive amounts of 5 stars over here. As you can see, like everyone's 5 stars. So at least some like way out, some options available as well. Um, pivot, unfortunately. I think the only 4 star that we have is like Luca here that you can consider if you're really looking to fill up your Hasbando team but uh, not as great as the other AoE elements. You might want a bit more AoE damage to do your auto battling and whatnot. Uh, I do think Argenti is pretty solid. Uh, we also don't have many AoE DPSs that are male. That's also another thing. Uh, most of them are like female. Yeah, or maybe well. Well is like the only one. And last but not least, of course, the utility slot is um, Dota. Japat, these two are probably solid options. And depending on your MC's gender, 
you could probably run Fire MC in the last slot here. But that is the Hasbando teams. And now let's turn to the free-to-play teams. Very quickly, for any of you new players joining the game, we always like to offer something to everyone uh, so that we are able to take something away. These teams might not scale into the end game, but they're going to help you in a way make your account very efficient as you are approaching the end game so that you don't like have too much if inefficiencies. I think... Um, Serval is a very solid pick, especially now with Pure Fiction around, Erudition characters are more in the game. Uh, Serval is always a safe pick if you don't plan to develop your Lightning Weakness Breakers uh, much. Maybe you don't have Ting Yuan, maybe you're playing Kafka in another team. Serval is a very safe bet usually most of the time to fall back on. It doesn't really like fall out of flavor 100%, always going to be usable if the enemies are weak to Lightning some way or another. So AoE here, you have single target here. Uh, Shock is also a debuff, so it's very nice for that. You have Esther here in the first, let's talk about the first and then the second row as two different teams. You have Esther here who provides attack bars for your two DPSs, speed bars for both of them, especially when you're new to the game. You don't really have that good speed relics, you don't have that good attack relics and, and gear and whatnot. All these buffing coming from Esther is very, very easy to get, very straightforward as well. Uh, a lot of speed that she gives your whole team, so you'll feel your team moving faster. Feels more smooth flowing as well. Offers burn too, so that is worth something. Serval doesn't really take too much skill points. Esther does occasionally, uh, but you can find that Serval as well as your utility characters would more or less be able to offset uh, the skill point consumption of both of these two characters now and then. And um, out of all of them, I think the free ones are Natasha and Lynx. I think now if you kill, clear like uh, Pure Fiction or something like that, you get it for free, but um, they are used interchangeably here. None of them really synergize better than the other in this team composition, but both are really solid to build. Between the two, Lynx generally outperforms in the later endgame stages. Natasha just fall off quite a bit, but um, just because of Lynx's ability to form more future teams, which we already talked about in our other team composition videos. The last one, of course, is the bottom row here. This is a defensive team or, or a follow-up attacking slash side defensive team for most of you who maybe are running Natasha or Lynx in the other half. Mark 7 offers follow-up attacks, which uh, unfortunately doesn't combo together nicely with Dr. Ratio. It's more of like Topaz and Numbi, but if you plan to pull Topaz and Numbi in future, building much could be an option for you for now. But still, you have a decent amount of shielding here, together with Fire MC here who offers Taunt, who offers um, like applying some debuff on enemy and sustain for the whole team too. I think it's pretty solid. So those are my options. Those are my team comps for Dr. Ratio. What do you think about the video? And if you're looking to build him, or maybe you're considering another video on what's the difference, or should you build him if you have Dr. Imbabita Lune, since you realize a lot of the team comps here don't really have much synergies between both of them. What are my thoughts? Do you still build Dr. Ratio if you're Imbabita Lune? Check out our other videos. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.